This is the Wapak Area Public Library's Lunch and Learn. And thank you for joining me on this uh, December day or the January day that that uh, I think we've been cheating winter, so I think we're we're pretty lucky with where we are right now. Um, I wanted to uh, also thank uh, Peg for inviting me today. Um, Sylvia, I'm actually almost relieved that she wasn't able to come today because she has a tendency to get a little embarrassed if I talk about her, and she truly is a strong woman. She's, uh, she was 78 when she finished walking all 1,093 miles of the Ice Age Trail. And she's, she was 82 uh, when we picked up the book from the publisher, from the printer this, this fall. So she's truly proof that, that you're never too old to be engaging in things that, that really are important to you. Sylvia is somebody who um, has multiple interests. She loves taking pictures. The, the book showcases much of her photography. I have some of my pictures in there too. And she also loves to write and she's passionate about nature. She's also an educator and this book is something that she wants to educate more people about the trail and invite more people to walk the trail. Um, what we did is we highlighted about a dozen segments of the Ice Age Trail, and we included photographs from those segments. And then we also had essays that included our adventures on the Ice Age Trail. Um, Sylvia's also, um, she's also somebody who never really wants to make a big deal of her age. And when I met her, she had recently retired from teaching full time. I believe as recently as last year, she was still substitute teaching. She hates the R word. She never wanted to be called retired. And she's also, I believe for 40 years, has um, coordinated the environmental speech contest for students at the, the high school in, in Thorpe where she, where she taught. She's also um, somebody who inspires because she was, when she was getting her teaching, she, at that time, women weren't even expected to continue teaching. If, if you got married, the district made you resign. Mm -hmm. And after she had six children, her mother-in-law came to her and said, you know, Sylvia, if you would like to go back to teaching, I think that would be okay because um, they were in the process of buying the farm from her husband's parents. And she said, I'll help with the children and the child care and I'll help make lunch if you want to go back to teaching because I know it would help you with buying the farm. And Sylvia jumped at the chance because she loves teaching and to this day she hates cooking. So, <laughs> so she found it a good bargain. Um, now Sylvia uh, has walked the entire trail. I've done only about a third of it, which is about 370 miles. Now that uh, we've got the book out and I'm doing a little talking about it, I need to jump back on the trail and get finished with it. Um, does, uh, how many of you are familiar with the Ice Age Trail? Do you have an idea of? Okay, so quite a few. And I know because it goes through Hartman Creek State Park in Wapaka, so I, I was assuming a lot of you would at least know about the trail. I, I don't know how well you can see the map from there, but the trail was actually designed to follow the edges of the last glaciation as it uh, covered Wisconsin, and it didn't cover the entire state. So much of our state was formed by the glaciers, and I know one of the library books that's available is the geology of the uh, Ice Age Trail. And the trail was really designed to show people our history 
based or our geology and our history based on the action of the glaciers. So there'll be giant rocks that are just dropped in the middle of a field. That's what's called erratics. They've been dropped there by the glaciers. And so much of, you know, like the, the rocky countryside, the little, the little rocks that are tumbled smooth, all of that was because of the action of the glaciers. And as you walk the trail, you really learn so much of the geology of our state and so much of the history of our state based because there's an accompanying guidebook and there's also an, an atlas that goes with it. Uh, what I would like to do is start with the preface of the book. This is Sylvia's words. You have to live for me now, mother. Finish the trail for daddy and me. Those were the words of my beautiful daughter, Marie, who died of breast cancer July 1st, 2010. So that is what I vowed to do, finish all 1,000 miles of the Ice Age Trail. At that point, I had finished 780 miles of the trail. Walking the trail gave me a reason to keep going. Not only was I grieving the loss of Marie, but also I was sadly missing my driver, my dear husband, Jean, who passed away a month before our daughter. So many times he would drop me off and then pick me up seven to 10 miles farther where a road crossed the Ice Age Trail. He loved seeing Wisconsin and the formations the glacier left. After I'd completed a hike, he'd say, you have to see this rustic road, and off we'd go to see more of our beautiful state. This book is the story of my adventures on the Ice Age Trail, along with my friend Chris Rude Clark, who walked many miles with me. We have highlighted some of our favorite segments in hopes that you too will explore the trail and create your own adventures with friends, family, and those you may meet on chapter hikes. Sylvia actually became interested in walking the trail by taking part in a 50 mile hike. It was a week long hike that was sponsored by the Superior Lobe. And this is um, her adventure on the trail that begins our adventure with, with the book. Tenderfoot Hiker, Superior Lobe. A 50 mile hike? Why would you want to do that? That was the question Jean, my husband, asked as I waved the newspaper article in front of his nose that morning. It took a while to make him understand that I thought it would be great to get outdoors for a long hike. Hiking on the Ice Age Trail, taking photos, learning to identify rocks and plants appealed to me. It didn't matter if the rest of the family thought I was a little crazy. I had no tips on proper gear, but I was about to learn. In my duffel, I just threw some jeans, a jacket, and my comfortable Nikes. I packed some disposable plastic boots used by, used by barn inspectors just in case of rain. Fresh air and September weather greeted the group as we assembled for the first day of our trek, sponsored by the superior lobe of the Ice Age Trail. We started near Brill, Wisconsin in Barron County. It was neat to see trees with a few red leaves shining in the sun, but I was most impressed by the trees the beavers had cut down. Near the beaver dam, I saw several fallen trees, some hewn to the center that looked like the work of some powerful sawing machine. Beaver teeth. I took photos proving working like a beaver is not just a saying. Closer to the ground, I saw bottle gentian, a new plant to me. Wild black-eyed Susan grew beside the trail and seemed to look up at us with their brown button eyes in a circle of yellow petals. We saw soft, fuzzy cattails near the water as we hiked along the wetland. Later, I snapped a picture of the abandoned heron rookery. I counted 55 huge nests. So many good sights to see. The next day, it started to mist, then turning into real rain. So I donned my clear plastic boots. Proudly hiking in my comfortable Nikes, I thought I was pretty cool. My boots surprised and amused fellow hikers who teased and called me the barn boot girl. And the boots worked fine, for a while, that is. Rain pattered down steadily the next day while we did some interesting road walk. Some Barron County streets have names that end in one half and one quarter. I was told people here love this type of street marking because they know exactly how many miles to the next corner. It's good to know how different counties do things. The rain kept pouring down. No bother to me until we came to the Tuscobia Trail. 
At first, I took some pictures of beautiful birches near a small kettle lake with a hint of fall showing on the red sumac leaves. The next part gave me trouble. Here we trod on sharp gravel because the trail followed an abandoned rail line. A special kind of quartzite rocks had been imported there many years ago. These chunky rocks cut right through my thin plastic boots. My boots were being shredded at every step. I walked for miles with wet feet. I didn't think wet feet would matter, and soon the trail went back into the forest. As I walked up and down hills, my wet toes were pushing to the front of my shoes. It didn't take long to get sore toes hiking down hills. Up and down we went. Some hills were pretty steep, and what goes up must come down. On the way down, I had to put on my brakes. With every downhill, my toes hurt more and more as they pushed harder against my shoes. I only lasted another day and a half. My toes were hurting and felt like they were on fire. But what do neophytes know? Live and learn. One of the hikers had told me about a wonderful tape called moleskin. I bought some. After two days at home, I found out how far my friends were and was able to join them on the last day of the hike. When they saw me, a cheer went up for barn, barn boot girl. And with moleskin toes so nice and cozy, I hiked those last miles to the finish line. What a great feeling. We watched and cheered the young man who had done the most Ice Age trail miles to date. He was presented with a walking staff and proclaimed a star hiker. I began to wonder, might I do that? I looked around and saw my new friend Laura, the expert birder, who had informed me about heron habitat. Next to her, I saw the smiling woman who told me she was planning her next hike on the Appalachian Trail. We gathered around the trail marker, smiling and posing for a group picture to be displayed at a restaurant called Adventures. All that enthusiasm was catching. That night, I went home and said to my family, I'm going to hike the whole 1,000 miles of the Ice Age Trail. <laughs> and this is another thing that's impressed me about Sylvia. She's also very active. She took up uh, cross-country skiing when she was in her 50s, and she raced in 18 of the Birkebiners, which is the, the ski race that goes from Cable to Hayward. And she, she would always brag because she'd say, well, I was, the, I was the winner in my age group. And then her husband would tease her and say, you are the only one in your <laughs> age group. But she still did it. And I think that's, and even now, she's, um, she looked outside when she got home from, she was in California over the holidays and came home and looked out and said, ah, the, the snow on the barn hill is looking pretty good for, for doing some, some skiing. Well, I met Sylvia through a poetry group in Marshfield. And at the time, I was writing for a magazine called Boomers and Beyond. And she really impressed me because she had just come back from a week-long uh, rafting trip in, <coughs> in Yellowstone. It was a, a writing professor she had taken who offered this as uh, a writing slash history commemorative tour because it was at the time of the, the Lewis and Clark um, the anniversary of Lewis and Clark. And so they, they kind of followed some of the trail of Lucas, Lewis and Clark, and they would write, and they would journey on, on the Yellowstone. Where does she live? She lives in Thorpe. She lives near Thorpe. So she's over by, by Eau Claire. And I was, I was just so impressed with all these things. And I said, I would love to write an article about you walking the Ice Age Trail and let more people know about the trail. And she said, well, if you want to write about the trail, you really need to experience the trail. So she and her husband picked me up at our house. We live by Arpen, which is between Marshfield and Wisconsin Rapids. They picked me up at our house and um, took me to the Dells of the Eau Claire, which is near Wausau. And that's another segment that's on the Ice Age Trail. I'm just going to see if I can find it quick in here. And we walked for about three miles that day. And when we finished, she, she, she mentioned, yes, this is some of the Dells of the Eau Claire. And um, when we finished that day, uh, I said, oh, I really enjoyed doing this. And she mentioned that her family and friends would walk a little while with her and then lose interest. And I said, well, I'd be really happy to walk with you anytime you want. So uh, we realized that she was actually walking in Taylor County. So I would meet them at a truck stop in Abbotsford and park my car there, and her husband would drive us, and um, we, would, we would walk maybe five or seven miles. He'd say, 
he got such a kick out of planning things and saying, well, here's where you're going to be today, and um, I'll, I'll pick you up on this road, and if you still want to walk a little farther, I'll pick you up on this road. And then he always insisted on buying us a nice meal on the way home. <laughs> but uh, once, this, this is a, a good visual of the trail. It starts in uh, Potawatomi State Park by uh, Sturgeon Bay, comes down through the Kettle Moraine, and goes up, it goes around uh, Devil's Lake, comes up over here through Portage and Wapaka counties, and then goes across through Langley, Lincoln, Taylor counties, and over to um, St. Croix Falls. So when I met Sylvia, she had already completed this whole segment, so we were walking in Taylor County. And I was just walking along to, to walk with her, and I thought, this is fun, it's wonderful to get out in the woods and spend a day walking and, and learning more about the state. And once I had walked all across Taylor County, I thought, oh, maybe I can, maybe I can do the trail too. So um, Sylvia is what you call a segment hiker or a section hiker, and they walk just a segment of the trail at a time rather than some. There are many fewer people who will want to walk the whole trail all at once, and it probably takes them a couple months to do it. There was actually one fellow we met who did uh, he, he was a runner and so he actually ran the trail and I think he did it in I'm thinking a few weeks but I would recommend the way we do it because you get to see if, if you're so obsessed with just finishing the trail you're going to miss so much because we would walk a segment and we love we both love taking pictures so we would um, take pictures along the way and Sylvia would always when she got home from right from walking that segment she would write up a little description usually just a couple paragraphs but she'd talk about what we had seen uh, maybe the types of plants what the weather felt like um, what what kinds of animals we'd seen or even heard it wasn't unusual when we would be walking in Taylor County a lot of it it goes through the Shawamigan National Forest and through Taylor County Forest we would walk all day without hearing even an engine. We, we, there would be no cars. There would, and, and sometimes I would say, oh, is that a lawnmower starting? And it was a rough grout flying up. That we <laughs> and we actually, Sylvia, Sylvia saw a bear, and um, I, we saw a bear together once. Those were about our biggest adventures. And her bear, her bear sighting was, uh, this is her story again, her adventure. Smile and bear it. Time can, time can seem to stand still on a nice sunny day in the summer. It did for me as I hiked the Gandy Dancer Trail near, Mil near Milltown, Wisconsin, and that's um, way on the western side, near, almost near St. Croix. I had just started my 10th mile when out of the bushes stepped a big black bear. This was also when she was walking by herself, and I think that's why her husband was so happy to, to have me walking along that he didn't have to worry about her in the woods. We both froze, and it was a stare-eye contest. With barely six feet between us, I was awed by the sight of this tall bear and kept thinking, is this for real? Neither of us knew what to do. Time stood still. I smiled to myself and thought, you knew this could happen. Now what are you going to do about it? It's amazing how many thoughts can run through your mind in a second. I leaned forward a bit, hoping the bear would run, but he just stood there looking. Without turning, I took two steps back and noticed some raspberries. The raspberries made me think of the time Uncle Bill was picking berries and thought a neighbor was picking on the opposite side of the patch. <laughs> he was very surprised when he saw a black bear. Still, um, Uncle Bill picked slowly and steadily away and was unnoticed. If it worked for Uncle, it'll work for me, I thought. So I picked a berry and ate it right in front of that bear. <laughs> I don't know if I would have been that brave. <laughs> the bear did what seemed like a few dance steps with soft ballet feet, turned to the west, and ambled off into the bushes. <laughs> it was an adventure to see the bear, and I do think most people in northern Wisconsin do well living with this form of wildlife. The DNR tells us there are 13,000 and probably more black bear in Wisconsin. The bear are very healthy at the present time. It has been reported they are having three or four cubs more often. Also, bear density has been expanding southward in Wisconsin. All we need to do is adjust to a few sensible rules. Don't feed the bear. 
It's against the law. Food put out or garbage left about will keep the bear coming back and make them dependent and out of their habitat. A friend told me about a bumping noise he heard one night. He looked out the window and saw nothing but black. Where's the moon, he thought. He soon found a black bear, back pressed against the window, shaking the bird feeder to get the seeds. <laughs> the bear may make visits to the cornfields in the fall. One year we had seven bear in our town. Attention library patrons, there is a blue Oldsmobile minivan parked in our loading zone, license plate number 418NMC. Mm -hmm. One, one year we had seven bear in our town. We had one mother and two cubs in a tree at a residence and another in the park with her three cubs. The police just took a yellow ribbon and top, to roped off the area. They said the bear would soon go quietly back to their own area, and they did. When you're camping, put your food in a bear box. Do not keep food in your tent. While camping with a group, we were not allowed to keep even toothpaste in our tent. An ounce of prevention makes sense. Extra precaution may include bringing in grills, bird feeders, and pet food at night. The black bear is an interesting and beneficial animal in Wisconsin, as well as a thrilling subject to observe, photograph, and study. Of course, these activities must be carried out safely with respect for both bear and people. I'm putting my bear sighting on my list of high adventure. You can too. When you see a, bla a big black bear for a few moments, time may just stand still. <laughs> and she was able to get bear pictures for the book, but it was a, an, a friend of hers in her photography club, and this wasn't from actually the trail sighting. <laughs> Although we also, um, we also had our own um, bear sighting, and this was pretty calm. But this was after um, Sylvia and I had been walking, oh, probably at least a year or two, and her husband had a heart attack and ended up on dialysis, and yet he was still able to drive us. So he was. This was this was the first time that we went walking after his heart attack. And my my sister lives in Germany, and when she would come in the summer, a highlight of her trip home would be walking on the Ice Age Trail. This was on the Chippewa Moraine. There's a turtle. Hurry, get a picture. Jean hollered from the car. He made the three of us laugh so hard. Did he think I couldn't get my camera out in time to photograph a turtle? <laughs> <laughs> it was Jean's first time back as our driver since his heart attack due to a long time bout with diabetes. He was out and about once more, enjoying the summer weather and scenic views on our drive to the trail. I'm sure he found the cheerful chatter of three women looking forward to a walk very pleasant. Our plan was a five-mile hike starting at the Interpretive Center near New Auburn on the Chippewa Moraine. Everything was fresh and green on this beautiful 3rd of August. I took Jean's advice, hurried with my camera, and I did get the picture of the turtle as it slowly made its way to the side of the road. But the next photo op on the trail that day was a different story. We started down the trail into the tall trees. Late summer weeds and wild asters bordered the trail. We had gone about a quarter of a mile when a black bear popped up out of the ferns and berry bushes. The bear froze and just looked. He was so clean with shiny black fur and nice brown nose. In the excitement of the moment, I fumbled for my camera, my fingers all thumbs. By the time I focused it, the bear had turned. Chris was in the lead. She said, anyone have food? <laughs> I thought, does this girl, who talks to the animals, even snakes, want to entice the black bear for a picture? But I guess she was just being cautious, which I was. I thought, did he smell our food? <laughs> the bear looked back once more and slipped quietly back into the woods. We decided it was a junior bear abandoned by its mother and that it was just bewildered being sent out on his own. It was a thrill seeing the bear, and it led to Caroline, Chris's sister from Germany, telling her story about the wild boar that city workers had to capture in her garden in Berlin. We walked along visiting and enjoying the nice fresh air. By late afternoon, we finished the trek and stopped in Bloomer for delicious kolaches and coffee. <laughs> and um, one of the things that uh, we also like to encourage people is you can walk in all seasons. We've, um, in fact, this rock, I believe this is in 
Wapaka County, if I'm not mistaken. And in fact, we did we did do a photo index. Let me just double check that one. We did a photo index, and that picture is. Weddy Creek segment in Washera County, so it's it's near here, and it's funny because when when people who are familiar with the trail and walking the trail see pictures, they'll say, "Oh, I remember that rock," and they'll say, <laughs> and it's surprising how you, they'll they'll look at a rock with an interesting shape because I know there's another one in Wapaka County, and people have said, "Oh, I know where that rock is. I remember walking by it." <laughs> And sometimes we would get turned around a little bit in the woods, and Sylvia would say, I recognize that tree. I know I've seen that tree before. And I thought, I thought she was being a little bit extreme, but I think maybe she was. And this is um, the, the yellow blazes are how you can, um, this is how the trail is marked. And you should always be able to, as you see one blaze, look ahead and, and see where the next one is. And there are times, well, one of the things that I think is so remarkable about the trail is that it's built and maintained almost entirely by volunteers. There are 21 counties that the trail goes through, and every county that the trail goes through has its local chapter, and they, they maintain the trail, and they maintain that. So if it goes through brush or you know like prairie type things, they'll, they'll mow a path, or they'll cut the branches, or take care of fallen, fallen trees that go across the trail. And it's just, it's remarkable that we have this this 1,000 mile plus resource that anyone can use. You know, you even if you're just walking through it, you don't even have to have a park sticker as long as you're just walking on the trail. And it's just, it's amazing that we have this, that all you have to do is find, find the segment near you, just show up and start walking on it. And the other thing is the local chapters also have um, chapter events. So it's a good way to find other people who are interested in walking the trail. So many people, like in Sylvia's case, her husband wasn't able to walk the trail because he had had his hips replaced and he just couldn't walk very well. But he was enthusiastic about it, so he was happy to drive. But Sylvia also belonged to a couple different chapters, and she would, um, like, like they might have a spring wildflower hike, or they might have a snowshoe hike, or I know the Wapaka and Portage chapters have an annual hike-a-thon, and it's a good way to meet. Uh, it's a good way to meet people, whether they're chapter members or just other people walking the trail. And so many people that I've talked to who have done the entire trail have said that's how they they met their walking buddies is by by going to the chapter events. So it's just um, it's just a really nice way to to meet more people. And this um, when we when we were working on the book. Um, we also included a few poems that had been inspired by the trail. This is uh, January on the Ice Age Trail. And this was actually taken in Wapaka County. Well, it was from a walk in Wapaka County. Cardinals become grace notes, random red decorations in pines. As we walk through the snow-filled path in the forest, we are grateful. Someone has gone before us, forming a flattened crust with snowshoes. We step lightly, flat-footed, like tightrope walkers above the deep. And this is, I know it's hard to see some of the pictures, but we deliberately wanted to include pictures in all seasons to encourage people to, to enjoy the trail in all seasons. And when Sylvia finished her last, uh, the last section she did, it just worked out that way. The, oh, here's, um, the last section she did was Holy Hill. And it's a pretty dramatic, pretty dramatic, uh, it's, it's one of the highest. I believe Holy Hill is the largest came in Wisconsin. And this was after her husband and her daughter had passed away. And I was really kind of worried about her because it was like this was how she kept going through her grief. and. It was, she had this mission. She had to finish the trail, so she was going to do it. And she became so obsessed about it. Other people started walking with her and helping her. And it was it was good to see, but it was also kind of uh, alarming to me because I thought, what's she going to do when she finishes it? Because she's going to be so let down to have accomplished this huge goal and then be so let down. And then that's when she said, oh, let's do a book. <laughs> 
So I thought, okay, that'll keep her, that'll keep her busy for a while. I think I have to help with this. So that's how we ended up on another adventure, doing a book together. And um, we hired, we actually hired Cody Pop, who lives in Wapaka. He actually designs the Wapaka County Post. He's a graphic designer. I met him, I was editing Hoopla Magazine at the time, and we asked him to design the book. And I really think the reason it's so beautiful is his eye for, his eye for color and pattern, and he just made sure that everything looked great. So uh, thank you to him, too. Here's uh, the final segment that, that Sylvia walked. And of course, I still have two thirds of the trail to do yet. What shall I wear? Do I have my backpack, camera, and flashlight? Hmm, should I take moleskin in case of a blister or spray for bugs? Maybe I should take a warmer coat. But if I get hiking, this lighter one will do. Well, you can't take the kitchen sink, for heaven's sake. After all, it's only a one-day hike on the Ice Age Trail. <laughs> it was a great October blight, bright blue sky day, so we packed pretty lightly. Friend Chris and I set out eagerly on our 12-mile trek to cover the two segments of trail I had left, Holy Hill and Pike Lake. My dream of becoming a thousand miler was finally in sight. The Holy Hill segment of the Ice Age Trail runs very near the shrine. The steeples can be seen for miles as the hiker goes up and down hills. Our plan had been to walk south to Holy Hill, but changed because we thought, hike those hills first. The largest came in southern Wisconsin is Holy Hill. Like the sands of an hourglass is a good way to, to describe how a cone-shaped hill called a came is formed. As the glacier began to melt, holes in the ice allowed material to sift through the sand sift through like sand in an hourglass. Time passed, the ice went out, and this buildup um, this build up left behind became the triangular shaped hill. Thanks to the glacier, we have this awesome hill that almost took our breath away. At the top, Holy Hill is 1,350 feet above sea level, and you can see the Milwaukee skyline some 30 miles away. Once known as Government Hill, it was purchased by a priest, a log chapel built, and later became a basilica and a national uh, registered historic place. Today, visitors can climb the 178 steps to the tower and look over the countryside. After Holy Hill, we swished along in the fallen leaves, glad to see some late fall color while squirrels gathered acorns from the many large oaks along the trail. An Aldo Leopold bench placed there by a scout group was the perfect place to sit and eat lunch. Just then, hundreds of blackbirds came flocking up above our heads. I was marveling how they fly without crashing each other when one dropped a little present on the sleeve of my jacket. <laughs> At least it didn't hit my sandwich. Because I hadn't read the guidebook carefully, I had another pleasant surprise three hours later while hiking the Pike Lake segment. The sign said, take a side trip to another tower ahead. Imagine another tower. Powder Hill Tower is a wooden tower built on the second highest Cayman on the southern Kettle Moraine. It was amazing how far we could see from this tower. Two lakes, several towns and cities, windmills, Holy Hill steeples, and lots of country. This was the best tower yet. My goal was clearly in sight. We climbed down and continued hiking the last quarter mile of trail. In a minute, an 83-year-old man came jogging along beside us. He said he was very thankful for the trail because otherwise he would just be home watching TV. He had run a marathon the week before in Mount Morris, Wisconsin. He uses this part of the Ice Age Trail for good practice. Tears came to my eyes as I reached this finish line. I wiped them away and the runner kindly took our picture next to the trail sign. If only my husband Jean and daughter Marie could be welcoming me, I know they would be so proud. I couldn't believe it. By the time I got home, I had a dozen messages on Facebook. Someone left champagne and roses waiting on my doorstep. <laughs> oh my, I'm famous. All 1,099 miles completed. I'm a thousand miler at last. <laughs> Thank you. And I did, I did save some time toward the end. If anyone has questions about the trail or our experiences or, yes. <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> it's it's 
There's also, and, and the library has copies. There's an Atlas of the Trail and a guidebook, and you can actually check out copies or you can go online. The Ice Age Trail Alliance is the organization that um, oversees the trail. It is actually one of eight national scenic trails. And they, they print an atlas, but if you're interested in walking a specific segment, you can go online and you can um, print out just that page. And usually what we would do is when we were walking in the woods, we knew we were on like segment 85F, and we would print that page and stick it in our pocket, and also the page from the guidebook, because that would explain things in more detail so you would know what you're looking for. But um, sometimes you, you should always be able to see the yellow blaze. Like if, if you're standing here and there's a blaze, blaze right here, you should be within eyesight of the next one. But what can get confusing is like in the fall when the leaves are turning, a lot of them are yellow. So you'll see something and you'll think, oh, there it is. And some of the, some of the segments of trail, um, the volunteers do a wonderful job, and I know it's much better built now, but especially when earlier when we were walking, um, like I remember by the Mondo flowage, sometimes the trees will be down and like you'll see a tree lying on the ground with a marker on it and you'll think, oh great, that's a big help, you know, which at least, at least we know we're where it should be, but where do we go from here? But um, they, they really do a remarkable job and you just have to watch. And also if you look in, um, on, on the map, it's usually like, usually you know you're not too far from a road crossing. Taylor County, I believe, has some of the some of the longest sections of trail that are without roads but it's just um and then there are parts like like by devil's lake it's actually there's an asphalt path you know when when you get around the lake there's actually an asphalt path going up into the into the hills so that's that's an easy one to follow but then you also have to pay attention because like say Potawatomi State Park has several trails crossing through it so you really have to pay attention because there might be a, a blue blaze and a white blaze and a yellow blaze, and you just have to pay attention at, at the corners. And also, um, because logging, you know, a lot of this goes through national forest and logging is allowed, and sometimes you need to pay attention. And the other thing is they suggest if you're planning on walking a segment you're not familiar with, to contact the chapter coordinators in that county because they can tell you. Like I know one time, we were going to do a segment and a tornado had gone through and so a lot of the trees were down. Well, there's no way they could get out there and remark that quickly, so they just temporarily closed that segment of trail. But usually if you're if you're near a segment that has been closed for that reason, you're close enough to another one that you can you can walk another segment. Yes. Well, Sylvia, that's what I was trying to think too, because we um I wrote this article in two thousand five and she finished it in 2010. So that was five years that we were working on it. And we were, we would probably, um, you know, we might walk once a month and do, f you know, five miles, seven miles. As she got closer toward her goal, then she would walk, um, like sometimes we would walk 10 miles, 12 miles, 15 miles. And as we got farther from home, we might uh, stay at a friend's house or a motel to do a two day walk because most people will start walking close to home and then if they get to where they're hooked on the trail and want to do the whole thing, they'll start going farther and farther. And it helps if you can find other people who are interested because if you don't have a driver the way we did, um, you can find somebody else who wants to walk with you. And then like we, we met a woman at one of the chapter events and she's over by um, Eau Claire. So when we when we've wanted to meet, we would meet near where we were going to hike and then we would shuttle so that we didn't have to walk. Otherwise, you're walking everything twice if you park here, walk the trail, and have to go back to it. So it's really nice to find other chapter members. And I know when Sylvia, her daughter, lives in Sun Prairie, and she had a cousin by Plymouth. So you know, find people who are willing to shuttle you as well. In fact, one time she was walking with her son-in-law in near Manitowoc, and he just went up to some strangers and said, would you mind giving us a ride to, so that you can drop us off here? And it's like, well, he, he handed them the keys to his car, and they're like, oh, sure, fine. <laughs> but <laughs> not everybody is quite that, that trusting. But um, I, you know, there are ways to, and the other thing is a lot of the chapter coordinators will actually give you a ride if you want to because a couple times we did that we did a full moon hike um, near the straight lake segments and um, in western wisconsin and we had contacted 
the ch we knew they were having the full moon hike, so we said, well, let's, let's do that, and we'll walk during the day. So we contacted the chapter coordinator, and he, we, we dropped the car where we wanted to end up and then drove back to where we wanted to, he drove us back to where we wanted to start, and that's, that's a, another way that you can, you can find. And I also believe, um, I haven't seen it lately, but I believe there was a brochure that had bed and breakfast along the trail, and most of them, if you're doing the trail and you stay at their bed and breakfast, will be happy to shuttle you in the morning so that you can, yeah, so. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Well, no, I I actually do. And and that that was one of the, that was one of the things. Thank you for bringing that up because when we did the book, we uh we alternated we alternated. I just read our adventures today because I thought that was that was, you know, that's the story of Sylvia walking the trail. But we also for each segment that we highlighted, we had now for example, here's the Wapaka, the Belmont Emmons. Um we, we highlighted that segment of the trail and described what you'll see on it. And we also gave directions so that if somebody doesn't know anything about the trail, they could find it. And what's so nice about the trail is a lot of it is on county parks or state parks. And it makes for a wonderful day adventure to, to, to go to the park. And I think Wood Lake in, I believe, Taylor County, the trail goes right around the lake. And so you could go there with children, and we highlighted different options of walking so that if you had small children or people who didn't, weren't able to walk as far, I, j I just encourage everyone to get out in the woods and in nature. And if it's only a quarter mile, you're still outside enjoying that beautiful trail. Yes. Right, because the um, um, I'm, I'm blanking on his name now, but it's uh, I think Roy Zilmer, Ray Zilmer, in uh, 1958, he wanted to create a national park, and he envisioned basically like a green belt going across the state that would protect all of the geology of the ice age of of what showed the ice age, and so it was done as. Uh, Let's see, I think it was Representative Henry Royce formed the Ice Age National Scenic Reserve, and they gave special status to nine geologic gems across the state, and the intent was for the Ice Age Trail to connect those gems. And um, so the Ice Age Trail is actually one of only eight national scenic trails, like the Pacific Crest is, is another one. And so it, it's really, I think, we have this wonderful resource in the state and so many people, we would, well, sometimes when we would be looking for the segment we planned on walking that day, we'd stop at somebody's farm or yard and say, you know, is, can you tell us where the trail is from here? And usually the directions in the guidebook were pretty good, but sometimes you'd get a little uncertain. And most of the time they'd say, what? What trail? I, you know, they... <laughs>